is the Frank Hertz apparatus. There are three main parts to the experiment you'll be doing. There's the control apparatus, there's the tube itself, and then there's the oscilloscope. This lab's going to have two main parts. For the first part, you'll be using the control apparatus and the tube and actually visually looking at what's happening inside. For the second part, you'll be using the control apparatus, which is still connected to the tube, but you won't be looking at what's inside, you'll instead be looking at what's going on using an oscilloscope. So I'll show how you connect this up. As you can see, there's a lot of connections. Almost all of them are banana cables, but unlike previous labs, this is actually color-coded. So in making the connections, pretty much everything is color-coded, which is good because they're also labeled in German. So the best thing to do is work from the outside in, since a lot of the cables are very short. So you want to start with some of the longer cables, and the control grid is on the left here, and it's the rightmost thing here, and that's a 9-volt fixed signal. So you plug your banana cables in. And the next one is going to be the acceleration voltage, which is really the main control in this experiment. And that goes between about 0 and 80. So that's the um, acceleration anode. So that's the A here in red, and again over to the right. Then there's a heater. Anytime we want to generate an electron beam, we need a heater. So that's the green one and medium size cable works there. And then the cathode is the connection in black. Now be careful in that there's this ground here and that there's a cathode also in black. Um, you want to just connect the cathode, not the ground. Note that the, I'm assuming cathode in German is a K, which is why that's what it is. Um, and you can use a fairly short cable for that. And then uh, the last one is this yellow one that's banded in green, and that's going to serve as a ground for you. I can a short cable there. So initially, um, these are all the connections that you're going to need for actually visually inspecting what's going on in the tube. You don't actually need to cre um, look at the output signal yet. That will be in the second part of the lab. Now, before you turn it on, you want this to be in manual. There's a toggle switch here. You want to turn down the acceleration voltage. You want the heater to be at about 7. You then need to turn it on and probably wait 5 to 10 minutes before you have stable operation. So the orange glow that you see is currently only from the heater. What you want to do after you've given it a little bit of time to warm up, you should see that and you'll see some orange spots throughout which are primarily from reflections from the heater itself which is a small orange circle. Now you want to start turning up your acceleration voltage and what the acceleration voltage is doing is accelerating electrons upwards in the small central area of the tube. As the electrons gain enough energy they then give their energy to the gas exciting the gas creating an orange glowing region. So what you're looking for is the orange glowing region that indicate that the gas is de-exciting after interacting with the electrons. This is going to initially start near the top of the tube. And this is a very small region that we're looking at. And as you turn up your accelerating voltage, you will start to see a new glow appear, like that at the top. And that might appear at, at 20 to 30 um, volts on your acceleration. So that's turning it down, that's turning it up. So it appears and as you keep turning it up it actually moves downwards. Now one of the things that you're looking for which is hard to see on the video but you'll be able to see by eye is that there's actually bands of glowing. That it's not just one big bright area but there are regions where it's dark, and there, none of the electrons have enough energy to excite the gas, so it's not a region of de-excitation. So your goal is to look at this and try to understand, there you should be able to see the two bands, how changing the acceleration voltage changes the number of bands and the placement of the bands, and this would be a qualitative part of the lab. So as you turn it up, you get more bands, and they move down. 
And this will make more sense after you do the quantitative part as well. But you want to see how many bands you can get. And you can adjust the heating voltage a little bit, that if you turn it down just a tiny amount, you'll now have fewer electrons, and you might be able to more clearly see the spacing. But if you turn it down too much, you'll l lose your beam completely. So this right now is at about um, maybe 7 or, or 6.8 volts is, is a good place to run it. So this is really what you're seeing for the qualitative part of the lab, where the toggle switch is on manual and you're controlling the accelerating voltage by hand. Here I'm turning it down. There you go. For the second part of the lab, you're now going to use an oscilloscope to make quantitative measurements. So we need to make a few more connections. The oscilloscope is going to be looking at the current of the electrons reaching the other end of the tube. So we need to actually connect to the other end of the tube, which is a BNC cable from the top of the tube over to the, uh, the input. An input in this case means to an, an amplifier, which will then pass the signal back to our scope. So input in this case is input from the tube to our amplifier. And it should be off for making these connections. And then the output of our amplifier, which this symbol means amplifier, we're going to take back to our scope. So this is going to be an XY mode, which I'll explain a little bit, but you want to make sure that you have the right connections. The bottom it says is X out, and it says that that's UB divided by 10. This is going to be our acceleration voltage divided by 10. So it says 0 to 7 volts, where over here it was like 0 to 70. So you can use a red cable there and go from X to channel 1. And note that I've put on the BNC to banana adapters. Now you also need to ground it, and that's what this middle ground is for. So go from oops, this ground to the black portion of your BNC to banana. And you have to have those colors right or it won't work. Now we also have to look at what our signal is doing. So the scope doesn't automatically know what is our voltage and what is our signal, we have to take both of those from our apparatus. And so the second cable goes from the Y out to channel 2. Now channel 2 also has a ground that you need to connect. What I recommend is taking a short cable, connecting it from this black connection to the back of this cable. So those grounds are tied together. So now when we turn it on, to put it in the mode that the oscilloscope will work for, you want to go to ramp 50 hertz underneath the acceleration. So this is going to be automatically changing what the acceleration voltage is, and we'll be looking at how the signal changes. Now this scope is a little bit different from what you're used to using, but it is also an analog scope. And the first thing you want to do is put it in dual mode, um, and you want to work on adjusting, let's see, um, putting your source, which is trigger source, to channel 1, making sure that all of your couplings are DC here, and then DC there is there. And I want to try to find my signal. Go ahead and stop it. And go. So the first step you want to do is make sure you can actually find your signal. So in order to do this, you need to turn up your acceleration to about 50 or 60, because this, the ramp is actually going to go up to that amount. So once you find your signal, you can test that, but set it to about 50 or 60, and then that should be your channel 1, because channel 2 was your output, but channel 1 was your input. So what you want to do is go to mode, say channel 1, and you want to only be looking at that. Your time per division, you want to look at, say, 5 or 10. A 10 is a little bit better, but doesn't show up on the video. Uh, 5, you can start to see the peaks. And this should look to you like a, a half rectified wave. So now your volts per division right now is 2. So if I ask what this amplitude is, going from 0, 2, 4, little more than 6, and my ramp right now is set to be almost uh, 60, and this was your signal divided by 10. So that's consistent. So this right now is what my voltage 
input to my acceleration looks like. Sometimes it's zero, and then it changes and goes up to a value and falls back down. So as I change this acceleration value, that goes up and down, just what the maximum is. Now, the interesting signal is going to be what is actually happening on the output. And so that's your channel two. You want to go into channel two. Now, right now, it's not going to look very exciting. It's going to be mostly a flat line with a little bit of bumps and then this steep drop. Now, remember that what we're putting in is this periodic signal where it's changing the acceleration voltage. So this is ch showing you how your output changes, how the amount of current reaching your, the other end of the tube actually changes as a function of that input. Now, to see this a little better, you want to go to your vertical, and this is channel two, and zoom in a little bit and you can actually see some bumps. Now, not only are these going to change if you change your acceleration, but these are also going to change as you change your amplitude, which is a gain that's being applied, a multiplicative. So you should just see it going up and down. You don't want to take it all the way up. You'll get some distortion, but a medium value is good. The final thing you can do is put a reverse bias on. So at the very end, the electron beam is going to have a range of energies in that beam. And you really want to cut out all of the, the lower energy ones. So you do that by turning up a reverse bias. And what you can see is that if I turn the bias down, it slamps really up. But as I increase that, those bumps become much more obvious. Now right now, this isn't the easiest signal to analyze. What we really want to see is what does the output look like compared to, or versus, if we were to make a plot, our input. And we can do that called XY mode. So there's a button here in the horizontal that says XY. You push that, and now it's in XY mode. And what's beautiful about this is on your X axis, you are looking at your input voltage. And on your Y axis, you're now looking at what your output was. So now this is your ramping voltage, and this is your response. Now you can see that it isn't quite monotonic, that there's bumps up here and then there's flat line. And that's what was happening on the up part of the curve, which is this, and then the down part of the curve was all of this, which we're less interested in. So you can adjust the vertical and the horizontal. You can adjust the uh, position as well. And now what you want to do is actually use the tick marks here to make measurements and try to understand what is the spacing between these peaks? And by turning up your acceleration and adjusting, for instance, your gain and your reverse bias, you, will, you should be able to get fewer or greater peaks. This first little bump here doesn't really count, but you can also look at the, the indentations to see and use those little tick marks to get what the voltage difference is between these different uh, downwards, there's some noise, that's okay, you should still be able to make the measurement. And remember that your uh, driving voltage, this ramping voltage, was divided by 10. So when you go to make this measurement, you would count how many divisions it is, use your channel 1 volts per division, but then also to actually know what was do going on inside the tube, multiply by 10.